Hi, it's Janet Rockware for Moon Cusser Art. I'd like to share with you my process in creating geode amethyst. I do a lot of prep work and I hope this information will be helpful to you. I am working on an ampersand cradled basswood panel that has not been primed. What I do to prime my boards is I use a spray paint enamel and it works pretty good. However, this one was a low quality, cheap brand and right off the bat I got some dripping starting and it did not give me good coverage at all. I was very unhappy with how this turned out. Again, this is not the brand I usually use. It was something I had on hand and it's been sitting around and I wanted to use it up. Um, so I'm going to have to end up doing another coat. So it's been about 10 minutes and I'm back outside with my brand that I usually use, Rust-Oleum. This is a nice ultra cover, gives a good gloss finish. I am going to be working for clean sides on this piece. Um, I'll be taping them off so that I don't get resin on them and having a real good finish is very important to me. So I'm going to cover it all with this white, spray it down and let's see how that works. Well I finished that first layer of spray paint and it's been about two hours. The temperatures are pretty warm today here in the Northeast so the board is nice dry to the touch. I'm not getting any paint pickup on my fingers. The sides are not perfect. Uh, I don't ever expect them to be perfect at this point. This is what I still consider my first layer, my priming layer. So I'm going to go get my power sander. I'm going to sand down the sides. The surface I'm not too worried about because I'm going to be pouring the resin on that. But I do want it to be the white background. So I'm okay with the surface. It's just those sides that I'm going to give a little more attention to and do some more sanding on. All done with the power sander. And I cleaned up a lot of the runoff drips and everything from that first layer. Um, you can see that some of the corners are exposed a little bit, but that's okay because we're going to be doing another coating here, so it will help clean up some of those imperfections. If I'm not happy with it, I can always come back and do a little bit more hand sanding. Again, it's because I'm focusing on those sides because I'm going for clean edges. Um, it just really makes a piece pop off the wall as far as I'm concerned, so I love doing it. So here I am with my Rust-Oleum, and let's go. Hello again, everybody. It's 24 hours later, and the board is completely dry. I had brought it inside overnight so it could dry good. I've got 320 grit sandpaper there. I'm going to do my hand sanding now. Um, the surface again, I'm satisfied with that. The coverage is good. It's not going to show any of the raw wood, but these edges need a little bit of TLC. So I take that uh, block with the sand paper and I just scuff it up, get those uh, smoothed down, and I'm going to be spraying it with the uh, hopefully final coat of the Rust-Oleum there. Um, this is a gloss white and it gives a real nice finish to the edges. It works well because I'm going to be taping these edges off. Um, once it's fully dry it really gives a good surface. You can see a little bit of the imperfections there but again this final uh, spray of the Rust-Oleum should cover that all up. Again, if I'm not happy with it, I can be a little bit of a pain in the neck. I will go back and do some more. So let's get spraying here and see if we can't get this board finished up. Um, I'm outdoors. It's not very windy today, so the paint 
is settling on a little bit better than it did yesterday. I brought my board inside to dry and uh, it was colder out today than it was yesterday so it ended up giving me some problems. Um, if you look carefully here you can see why you have to watch your temperatures. So, you know, it's all stuff that you got to think about. I thought I could get away with it because I was going to do the spray and then come back inside. But, uh, yeah, things were not going in my favor. So, I'm going to be doing another sanding by hand to clean up that edge. But I have to wait for the boards to dry completely indoors so that I can scratch that surface up nice with that 320 grit sandpaper again. So cross your fingers for me. All right, so day three and everything's dry. The board came out good. You can see that shine on there. Um, finally got it just the way I like it. The surface is wonderful and the sides are good. I like uh, how clean they look and I'm going to start getting them ready to put the tape down. So what I do is I go around the bottom part of the edge. I use two pieces of narrower tape. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be at the lower edge and I'm going to wrap it completely around um, it's important to start at the lower part because the upper part I want to make sure I'm level with the edge of the board and this way the resin runs from the top across that first one. So here we go with the second part of the board. Um, again, this I'm lining up very carefully. I'm keeping it at the edge of the top of the board because that's where the resin is going to run over the sides and if I had put this one on first I could possibly get the resin running um, to that second wraparound. So I tried to uh, go carefully. And just another tip, watch out because the tape does stretch and bend. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to rub the edges of my board. So I'm just feeling it, making sure it's level. I start in the center and I work to the corners. So I'm using the side of a magic marker. It's a plastic tool. For me, it works really good to burnish that tape edge down and it really sticks tight. So let's go all around the board like that. And uh, this is just 3M, it's painter's tape. Um, it might be a little bit higher grade. I don't remember the name of it, but it tends to work really well for me. It does not give me any problems. Um, sticks in place, especially when I focused on having my sides real nice and clean looking good. I'm just checking those edges. So I'm happy. What do you think? Looks pretty good, right? And we can get ourselves ready for doing our resin on there. And we'll do that tomorrow as I spent more time sanding than I thought. Hi everybody, Moon Cusser Art again. And here we are uh, looking at the board, I'm going to be doing amethyst geode pieces that I found at a nice crystal shop. Um, I love purple and uh, I mapped out my lines. I just use a pencil. I try to go lightly so that I don't have any worries of show through. But having a map line does help you when you're doing rings and it kind of gives you a guide. So I highly recommend it. Um, you can do all different methods, but this one works well for me. All right, so now comes what I consider the fun part. I've batched up some of my resin. I like to use Pro Marine, and uh, it works well. Um, 
here I'm going to be starting to mix my colors. So the first one I'm going to mix up, it's a um, pearl lavender. And I do custom mix my colors. This one is a India ink. Now you saw there was only one drop that I put in there. But boy, look at that color purple I got out of that one drop. There's not a lot of resin in there, but it really did color it nicely and it's transparent. This is just a flat white. I need that um, for contrast in the piece. And the final color I mixed up is a real shiny silver. I like using um, this one as my favorite. So that's all set to go. Now we're going to start with pouring in our circles. So again, I've got that map line. I'm just going to keep building my circles. I do pinch the cup to give it almost like a spout. Uh, you can use paper cups. Be careful if you use paper cups. Uh, make sure that they don't have a heavy wax film on them. Most of the paper cups do have some kind of a film on them. Some don't but you don't want that wax because the resin is going to be warm and it could t potentially loosen that up and give you problems in your resin work. So I have a plastic cup that I'm using and I can pinch that and create a spout. I'll then use my popsicle sticks that I use for stirring to help lay it out a little bit better. Uh, this is going to be my um, guideline for building in, I'm going to work in towards the center of rings for this. So I want to make sure I'm following my guide as best I can. Because if I start letting it go at this point, I'm going to be in trouble. Here we go with my deep purple. It's really, really pretty. It's, uh, again, it's just the India ink, one drop. And look at how dark that purple came out. It's uh, amazing. And it's transparent uh, so it really is stunning um, we're going to now uh, finish that purple up again using the popsicle stick to work in the areas and let's get that going And I can pour out my white ring and layer that all in. My resin is starting to get a little gummy on me. Um, so I'm going to heat it up with the heat gun and push it into the purple. It gives you some nice effects with the heat gun. Here I do the second ring again. Just laying that in there. It's getting a little gummy on me, so I'm trying to work quicker. But... Uh, it's still laid out, and we're going to hit it with that heat gun, blow those rings into one another, get a little bit of effect at the edge, and we should be in good shape. So, like I said, my resin was starting to get gummy on me, and look what happened to my silver. Hardened on me in the cup, so watch out for that. I mixed some more resin and now I've got a nice purple here. Again, it's transparent and I'm going to be adding to it. I poured uh, the rings that I've got mapped out. I'm staying away from the rings that I already poured because I'm going to do some more work to them, but I want them to get a little on the gummy side. So in the meantime, I'm working on pouring in it. You might notice a little bit of tape there at the edge that's uh, a dam that I added on because I knew I was going to be coming to the edge of my board and I dam it up so that I don't get too much of my resin pouring off it holds it back you can see now this one's flowing really good I've got that cup pinched it makes a good spout and easy to handle so you can get that all in there use your popsicle stick to help control what you're doing on your board and we can get it all laid out. So just working all the way around, building up these layers and again, still following those mapped 
the lines on the board that I laid out so that it'll work as a guide for me. got all the purple poured out. I've mixed up some um, sand, some colored sand with a little bit of glitter in there. I'm going to be adding that to that purple ring that I just poured. So I use the heat gun just to warm it up a little bit, uh, make sure it's run tight up to those tape dams that I've added, and it'll make it just a little bit more accepting to me pouring the sand and glitter in there. So I'm just tapping it out of that cup and working my way through all those areas. Um, sorry about my hand being in the way, but it's going to move on to another spot soon. Just take your time and uh, sprinkle it in. There's many different ways that you can put um, the added products into your creation. Uh, sometimes I put the glitter right into the resin. Other times I want to sprinkle it on top. And depending on how fluid the resin is, it's going to either sit on top or drop down in. So this one I wanted it to drop down in a little bit and see how that works. So we're just going to keep moving all around. Try to be uniform in your coverage and it should fill in nicely and add some interest for you. Now I'm going to be adding the glass, crushed glass, and again this one was a little bit on the sticky side, so with the crushed glass it's heavier and I allow it to be a little bit sticky because that way it's going to keep it sitting up on top. Um, I don't want it to fall down in, I really want it to be exposed, it makes it really pop and builds up that 3D look and give it a good shine. I'm just going to use my torch, warm up that resin so that it accepts that glass really good. So day five. I decided to move my camera and give you guys a better angle. Unfortunately, I thought I was in time-lapse mode and it turned out that I wasn't getting any good filming, so I went back and made this clip real quick. I added another ring. Um, everything else was already dry. It's dark purple. It was a transparent purple. And then I went back and added these amethyst chips. Uh, really is beautiful. All right, day six, and things are going well. The camera angle is nice. 
time lapse filming is going good. I'm adding more rings. I'm doing it very quickly because I want the resin rings to bleed into one another and give me some effects when I heat it up with the heat gun or the torch. I add my center rings because I'm going to drop my geode pieces in. Just take a look at this. Isn't that pretty? So here's my centers. It's just a silver. I let it kind of get thick. I then put some on the back of my geode pieces and then just press them right down in for good adhesion. So here I am removing those tape dams. Uh, the resin, it's been about an hour since I poured it, so it's still, you know, movable. Make sure when you pull your tape off, you pull down. I can't stress that enough. It helps to roll those edges over just a little bit. Um, but you can see, it's not just pouring off my board. It's kind of holding on, but it's rolling over nicely. All right. Comes off real easy. So what I do then is I go and get my heat gun. You can see that little bit of a drip in a spot that was thicker. And what I'll do is I'll heat that up with the heat gun. You'll watch it. You should be able to see it. See how it just flows right over. It rounds those edges and it makes it so you don't have to go in and do any sanding. So just warming it up a little bit. Again, the resin has gotten a little bit thicker and heating it up rolls it. Okay, day seven. And the resin pour is over. Everything is hard. Those amethyst pieces, boy, they embedded beautifully. They're so tight in there. They have no worries that they're going to come out. So now we're in good shape. We're going to remove that tape edge and take a look at how it looks. So I'll, I'm going to find my seam and see those drip edges. That's from the heat gun rolling them over. They're going to come right off with that tape. So let's get the heat gun. We're going to turn that on, warm up the tape just a little bit. You want to be careful you don't get it too hot. And you want to do this the next day. You don't want to let it sit because the longer you let it sit, what happens is the resin just keeps getting harder and it'll be more difficult. So I find going in the next morning, I was working yesterday afternoon, so I come in in the morning, hit it with the heat gun, and just start to pull that tape off. What I like to do also is I pull off in an upward motion. So warm up those drips because they're a little bit tougher and it'll let the tape come off very clean and you can pick it up. Pulling in an upward motion helps it break that line and you'll get that real clean edge. Anything that might get stuck on the edge, you can go back with a heat gun and an exacto knife and very carefully pick those out but it works really well for me, and I hope it works well for you guys. It took me a little bit of learning the hard way, but I'd like to pass that on to you guys. So see that drip there? It actually went below to that bottom tape row, and that's where you can see it's important to have that lower piece on first. See, there's a piece of that. That broke off but I can just pick at it and get it right off with my nail anything I can't get with my nail again I'll just come back warm it up with the heat gun slightly and use my exacto knife and get it out of there but my fingernail which I don't have good fingernails but <laughs> anyway it works pretty good and uh, I'm real proud of how I get a nice pretty looking edge so all those drips are gonna be gone and I don't have to do any sanding either, which any sanding I don't have to do is a good thing. So we're just going to finish taking that off. The lower piece is even easier. You don't even have to warm it up. It's just going to come off. So we're going to clean up all the little bits and pieces, pull that lower piece off, and we've got a beautiful white shiny board edge that's going to make our piece pop off the wall. Okay, now we're going to work with the markers to do the detailing. I like Craftsmart markers, and I also like Posca pens. Uh, shake them up real good. If you don't shake them, 
you're going to have problems with the flow of your pen. So make sure you spend a little bit of time shaking them all up, get it mixed real good. And then just start outlining wherever you want. It's going to really accentuate some of the areas on the geode, gives a little bit more detail. Um, it's just, it's fun to do too. I really enjoy doing it. No rhyme or reason. So just keep going all around. Do wherever you feel like it many times as you want. I use three colors. I just went with whites, uh, silvers, and uh, Posca purple. And she's done. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial.